reading from Luke 10, verses 25 to 37. On one occasion, an expert in the law stood up to test Jesus. Teacher, he asked, what must I do to inherit eternal life? What is written in the law, he replied. How do you read it? He answered, love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your strength, sorry, with all your soul and with all your strength and with all your mind, and love your neighbor as yourself. You have answered correctly, Jesus replied. Do this and you will live. But he wanted to justify himself. So he asked Jesus, and who is my neighbor? In reply, Jesus said, a man was going down from Jerusalem to Jericho when he was attacked by robbers. They stripped him of his clothes, beat him, and went away, leaving him half dead. A priest happened to be going down the same road, and when he saw the man, he passed by on the other side. So too a Levite, when he came to the place and saw him, passed by on the other side. But a Samaritan, as he traveled, came where the man was, and when he saw him, he took pity on him. He went to him and bandaged his wounds, pouring oil and wine. Then he put the man on his own donkey, brought him to an inn, and took care of him. The next day he took out two denarii and gave them to the innkeeper. Look after him, he said, and when I return, I will reimburse you for any extra expense you may have. Which of these three do you think was a neighbor to the man who fell into the hands of robbers? The expert in the law replied, the one who had mercy on him. Jesus told him, go and do likewise. The word of God for the people of God. God, our Father, how we do thank you, how we do honor you, and how we do praise you. Dear God, for allowing us this opportunity that we can stand before your people and pray for them the bread of life, your word. And Lord, we confess that you are the living word. So it is our prayer that you will come alive in us and live in us. In Jesus' name. Lord, we don't preach for fame or fortune. But in the end, that someone would be saved. So, Lord, we pray right now that the gospel would not fall on deaf ears, but find fertile ground. In Jesus' name we do pray. And Lord, I don't know what it is about me, I always say it, but it makes me feel better when I say, Lord, I need you. I need you now, Lord. Help us to preach as never before, like a dying man to dying men and women. In Jesus' name we do pray. Amen. Come on, put those hands together and tell God thank you. I am in celebration mode this morning. I, I told you all last week that uh, uh, my daughter Jasmine uh, uh, got a green light from the Missionary Assessment Center. Yes. And then I don't know where he is, Jalon King won the state championship. And, and, and last week, last week, last week, it was my pleasure to be with Jose and Kathy as they got a green light to plant a church. Yes. Yes, and I, I, I stayed away from that process because I already know Jose and Kathy are awesome. The assessors just had to find that out. So I let them find that out, and they came through and passed with flying colors. And, 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 Kyle, you will be proud of this. Jose scored a 48 on his Bible quiz. 
48 out of 50. So, ooh, 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 ooh. Yeah. We are in this series, Space for God. And this morning, we are going to be talking about space for serving others. Space for serving others. You know, I don't have to tell anyone, I don't have to tell you that we live in a busy world. A, a, a world that can be filled with pressures of work. A world that can be filled with uh, pressures of family. And a world that can be filled with pressures of social obligations. So it can be difficult at times to make space and time to serve others. But as this passage we look at in Luke today, it reminds us that God calls us to serve others and to show compassion to our neighbors. In this passage today, Jesus, he teaches us the importance of making space and time for serving others. And he emphasizes the importance of love and compassion as we do it. We must actively make room to serve others so that we can demonstrate the love of our Savior and watch this, reflect God's grace. And making space and time for serving others is essential to living out the gospel of Jesus Christ. The parable of the Good Samaritan found in Luke 10, 25 through 37, it is familiar to many of us. We know how Jesus used this to answer the question, who is my neighbor? Who is my neighbor? And the answer he provided is simple. Everyone is our neighbor. It, it reveals just how important it is for us to love one another as ourselves and to serve one another. But loving our neighbor and serving others, it takes space. Loving our neighbor and serving others takes time. It takes space. It takes space to stop what we're doing, recognize a need, and respond with compassion. It takes space. It takes space for us to drop our agendas, uh, put down the devices that occupy us, and take notice of those in need around us. It takes space to look deeper than the surface of people's needs and invest in them. It takes space not to rush away from the difficult conversations, but to sit and listen and listen effectively. Space to often express a kindness that is much bigger than ourselves. It takes space. But it also requires time. It, it takes the time to offer care and devotion. Watch this. When no one else will. It takes the time to consider another's words or ideas despite our differences. It takes time to make wise and just decisions that lead to better outcomes. 
it, it takes time to create meaningful relationships with those in needs and to share our resources with them. In order to genuinely love and serve our neighbors, we must be willing to make space and time for it. Space and time created by stepping away from the demands of life and quieting the noise within us and prioritizing compassion over convenience. Making space and time for serving others is not a simple task, but it's one that requires an intentional effort Put in the need, put, putting the needs of our neighbors uh, before ourselves. When we set aside space and time, we begin to understand what it truly means to serve each other as Christ has served us. And today we look at a parable that Jesus told to teach us how and why we should make space and time for serving others. This parable that Jesus told is in response to a question an expert of the Mosaic law had for him. Uh, to test Jesus, he, he asked Jesus, what does he have to do to inherit eternal life? Re remember I said uh, a couple weeks ago, uh, you're only tested to prove what it is that you know. And this man was not necessarily seeking truth. He just wanted to hear what Jesus had to say about the matter. And Jesus in turn, he, he asked the man, what is written in the law? How do you read it? This man quoting Deuteronomy 6.5 and Leviticus 19.18 answered, You shall love the Lord your God with all your heart and with all your soul and with all your strength and with all your mind and your neighbor as yourself. Jesus responded by saying to him, you have answered correctly. Do this and you'll live. But the man, he wasn't satisfied and still not satisfied. He wanted to justify himself. So he asked Jesus, and who is my neighbor? And it's here that we can see that Jesus wanted to teach us all something more than merely answering the question. So he told him this parable we call the parable of the Good Samaritan. Let's look at this parable closer and reflect on how it applies to our lives. We know that in this parable, a man was going from Jerusalem to Jericho and fell in the hands of robbers. He was stripped of his clothes, he was beaten, and he was left for dead on the side of the road. Now, the two men who were considered religious persons, uh, a, a, a priest and a Levite. Incidentally, I, I named the set of crew Levites this morning, but not this kind of Levite. A priest and a Levite, they saw him, but they didn't stop to help. Instead, they passed on the other side of the road. Now, if there was anyone who would have known God's law of love, we figure it would have been the priest. The, the priest was supposed to be a person of compassion with, with a desire to help people. But we see that love for others was not a strong enough phrase to thrust the priest into action. So he passed on the other side of the road. And the next person that came by was a Levite. A, a, a Levite was someone else who would have known the law. And him too, he, him too, he, he, he passed by this man without showing any compassion at all. 
he does the same thing as the priest. He passes on the other side of the road. It's been many things said why these two pass by this man. It's been said that maybe they were afraid of being robbed themselves. They say that road from Jerusalem to Jericho was a rough one, and maybe they were scared of being robbed themselves if they had stopped to help. It, it also has been said that, that they were passing through, going back to Jerusalem, or they, they had to feel, fulfill some priestly duties. They had priestly duties to perform, and they didn't want to be late. But whatever the case, whatever the case, the fact that they saw him and passed on the other side of the road proves that they didn't want anything to do with this situation. And then there was the Samaritan. He was a person who had been despised by Jews for centuries because of cultural and religious differences. Yet, Jesus chose him to be an example of compassionate love and action. It was a Samaritan, someone who would have been considered an enemy of Jewish people who stopped and helped this man. The Samaritan took compassion on him, bandaged his wounds, and, and put him on his donkey and brought him to an end. He paid for any further expenses for the injured man. And the Samaritan in this story saw his neighbor as anyone who was in need. In the parable, it's clear that the Samaritan was willing to make space and time for serving the man in need. He was willing to interrupt his journey. He, he was willing to put himself in harm's way to go out of his way and help this man. And so it is for us today. So it is for us today. We should make time. We should make space and time for serving others just like this Samaritan person did. Despite his differences, d despite the potential danger, he stopped and he helped a person in need because of his compassion. And watch this, his love. Well, when we make space and time for serving others, we are demonstrating the love that our, uh, of our Savior. And we are reflecting God's grace. And this parable, what it does is it teaches us that we too must be willing to put aside our reservations, our, our, our doubts and our fears, and in order to extend some compassion and love uh, 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 that we want for ourselves. We must demonstrate this kind of love towards our neighbors, just as Jesus commanded us. Love your neighbor as yourself. And you may have the question like the lawyer did. And who is our neighbor? Who, who is my neighbor? Who is my neighbor? I, I, I tell you, your neighbor is anyone that is not you. Anyone that is not you. The first two people they... They passed by him, a, a, a priest and a Levite who, who, who didn't stop to help. But the Samaritan who stops, uh, cares for his wounds, and, and, and lifts him up and carries him off to a place of safety. This parable, I believe, was told to teach us about the importance of stopping. Of stopping and making space and time for those in need, even if they are strangers, even if they are different from us, Jesus made it clear that loving our neighbor is not something we should do out of obligation, but out of compassion, that same compassion that he has shown us. Compassion 
that is rooted in love and requires us to make time and space for others. I, I know that we all have busy lives. I, I know that we all have work responsibilities. I know that we all have family obligations. But if we can just stop and pause for a moment and be still, if we can make a little room in our hearts and in our minds for those who are suffering around us. Only then will we truly live out Jesus' instruction to love our neighbor as ourselves. Jesus, he was asking us to make space and time for others. To, to reach out of our comfort zones and extend compassion to reach out of our comfort zones and extend love, to reach out of our comfort zones and extend a little mercy. It's a call to action that not only makes us better people, but it also brings glory to God. As we serve others and as we are a blessing to others, we should remember the words found in Luke 10, 37. Go and do likewise. Go and do likewise. Go and do likewise. When we make space for others, it's not just for their benefit. But watch this, it's for the benefit of us. It's, it's for our own benefit. We become more connected to God through one another, through, through service to one another. And this is the kind of love God calls us to. And this is the kind of love that draws us closer to each other. Now, there are three things we can learn from this story. Number one, we need to or, or we are to put away anything that gets in the way of us showing love and compassion for others. Number two, our neighbor is anyone who is not us. And three, Keeping the law in its entirety with the intent to save ourselves is an impossible task. So we need a Savior. We need someone that can do that for us. And that someone is Jesus. There is another way to, or, or should I say there is another way that people interpret this parable, the parable of the Good Samaritan. And, uh, uh, and that is they use it as a metaphor. And in that interpretation, the injured man is all men in their falling condition, their falling condition of sin. The robbers are Satan, are, are Satan attacking the man with the intent on destroying the relationship with God. The lawyer is mankind without a true understanding of God and his word. The priest, the priest is religion in its backslidden condition. And the Levite is legalism that instills prejudice into the hearts of believers. But the Samaritan, the Samaritan is Jesus who provides a way to spiritual health. And any way you look at it, the, the Samaritan and Jesus show a real resemblance. They both have compassion and mercy. And just like the Samaritan showed compassion and mercy to his neighbor, Jesus shows compassion and mercy to us. We strive to be like Jesus, helping and caring for those in need. Just like Jesus who went to the cross for our sins and was nailed uh, uh, and, 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 and nailed them there for us. And, and, and forgiveness of sin is for us. And through him we have eternal life. 
We should make space for people in our lives like Jesus made space for us. Even if it means like Jesus going or getting out of our comfort zones. We should make time to serve others. Showing love and compassion to all, to everyone. And, and, and when we do this, we are filled with the joy and the peace as the Lord draws us into deeper relationship with him. Let's take Jesus' commandment to heart and make space and time for those in need. Let us use the love and compassion that he has poured into our hearts as a guide to loving and serving our neighbors just as he loves and serves us. Let's pray. Gracious God, our Father, how we do thank you, how we do honor you, how we do praise you. Lord, we thank you for your preached word on today. Lord, and we pray as we make time and space for serving others. That you would pour in us your love. And that you would pour in us your compassion. Give us your heart, dear God. So we can feel what you feel. And give us your mind, the mind of Christ. So we can think your thoughts after you. Lord, we live busy lives. But help us to pause. Help us to pause so we can see those in need around us. And then, God, may we be willing to lend a helping hand. Now, dear Lord, if there was anyone here that doesn't know you, we pray right now for them. And we pray, God, in the stillness and quietness of their heart that you would save them. Holy Spirit, we pray you do your regenerating work and exchange that heart of stone for a heart of flesh. In Jesus' name. And Lord, for those of us here that know you, we pray, God, that something was said, that we would be brighter lights and saltier salt. Lord, we pray that your love would shine so in us that people would see it and come asking, what must I do that I might be saved also? In Jesus' name we do pray. Amen.